Hello and welcome to the first of our uh, stops on our new walk by design from uh, Journeys and Design. My name's John Ennis, curator producer, and we're launching our, or I should say, we're introducing our new program, Concrete Designs to Thrive. Here we are um, in the middle of Edinburgh's old town, one of the oldest bits of the nation's capital. We're, doing, we're launching this as a series of stops on a walk, and this is our first stop. And it's part of Archie Fringe, Architecture Fringe 21, a great initiative, and I'd certainly encourage you to dip into the Architecture Fringe programme and see some other events there. The sun is with us, and I'm delighted to introduce Emma Oliver, who's also with us, and Emma's from the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust. Now, uh, let me say a couple of words about Concrete Designs to Thrive. Uh, we'll be looking at concrete, good and bad, uh, about the built environment, and then asking more searching questions along a series of themes. So we've taken some essential acts of life as our themes to give focus for our work. Um, we're looking at play, nest, heal, vote, pray, uh, meet. And these themes will help us um, as we go across Scotland's seven cities over the next three years. Uh, it's wonderful to be launching, uh, sorry, introducing the programme with a walk. And we're here because we're talking about design legacies. We'll talk about a number of design legacies through the programme, including Bauhaus, for example, but tonight we're talking about the legacy of Patrick Geddes. Now, I think it's fair to say um, you and I are both fans, Emma. Very much so, I will, yeah. I'll let you introduce yourself just now and then perhaps you could tell us a little bit about Patrick Geddes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I'm Emma, I work for the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust. Um, we run the Riddles Court building just down the road there, um, which is also the Patrick Geddes Centre for Learning. Um, now, Patrick Geddes, um, was a Scot. He was born in Aberdeenshire and then moved down to Edinburgh and studied at the university here. So he studied here, he studied in London, uh, he studied over in France and also paid a trip to Mexico before returning to Edinburgh. He is what one might call a polymath, for want of a better word, because he's very difficult to sum up in yeah, one word. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we're at this very special place and I guess there are a number of cities that might claim an association with Patrick Geddes and we're going to follow the uh, trail if you like both in Scotland to our seven cities and perhaps Dundee and to Glasgow and Perth where he was educated they all have a, a claim on him um, but we'll also look at Patrick Geddes the internationalist uh, we uh, Journeys Design believe that we all stand taller in the world where we can reach out to countries and countries and cultures other than our own just as he might have done so we'll have a little look over in uh, Montpellier, in uh, Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv in India. and in, in Ahmedabad in India, yeah. these wonderful places where he had uh, an input and influence as well. Well, look, let's, let's have a little walk down the, the high street. We've had a look at a tower building, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but let's, let's go a bit further down. This might be Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh, I think, could justifiably claim to be the home city and this particular area the most Gadesian of, of all the areas that Indeed. one might come to. And just across the road we have James's Court which was one of his first residences, his first one of his first so married homes. I, I love this story. He was living across in the more well-to-do new town, the yeah. newly built area and essentially the old town by the late 19th century had become something of a slum and he brought his wife Anna yeah. and his young child Nora out of that more well-to-do area and they moved into James Court, which was almost a slum. Indeed they did. Um, Patrick Geddes was one of those people who believed in um, teaching by design and doing as he wanted others to do. In indeed. So he was aiming to regenerate the old town. He wanted to bring students and the university back into the centre living in the old town and also middle classes back into the old town. So as you said, many of the very old um, 16th and 17th century buildings had become really run down um, and, and were slums in effect. Um, but in order to revive them, he moved in and then set about from within the old town changing it. So he moved in, he was married in 1886 and he moved here with his wife and his young child in 1887. I'm sure they were chuffed. 
I'm sure they were very chuffed. I'm sure it was quite a change. But um, Anna, luckily, was uh, quite a redoubtful woman. Um, she very much believed in his principles as well and supported him in those. So she ran sewing classes for local women from their home in St James's Court, whilst Patrick Geddes set about whitewashing the walls to improve the environment, planting flower boxes, demolishing he, some of the buildings and also creating gardens. So just in what we've said there, there are so many themes that one might think this guy was really, this, this couple really ahead of their time. And in many ways, um, that's why we're here, because we're going to look at the design legacy of Patrick Geddes as we go further on our walk by design and also throughout our concrete designs um, experience in, in Scotland's seven cities and reaching beyond to European cities and, el and, and elsewhere. Uh, act, think lo uh, global, act local. Uh, uh, and there are many uh, phrases like that attributed, in fact, um, absolutely said and, and drawn together by Patrick Geddes. Uh, he was fond of a, a triad of words, wasn't he? Yes. And one of the ones, well, one of the words he uses is folk and I, I love this that he, he basically wanted to come and find out through hard work in this area what it meant to the folk who lived here. Yes, so, so the triad you're referring to there is, is place, work, folk. So he believed in regeneration through acts and through education but also this real understanding of place. So he believed that any kind of education and learning had to come through and real understanding of the place. Um, so that was why he wanted to move here and work with the people who were here already to regenerate their own environment. So we've touched on a couple of other words there which I think are very key. Now Edinburgh High Street at this time of the year would normally be much much busier so uh, there are one or two people passing. I wonder if we can move now into Absolutely. the courtyard of Riddles Court. So I always get a, a bit of a tingle when I come in here. It, it, there's a real it's sense very of it really is atmospheric, isn't it? And it's been uh, beautifully restored. Uh, before we talk about uh, the work of the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust, perhaps we can just think a little bit more about one of the two of the things you said: regenerative design, where we not only design. This is a contemporary uh, notion where we not only design. Uh, so that we're neutral with our resources, but that we give something back, we enhance through the, the design process. Um, we're always at risk of a bit of, I guess it's called presentism, where you take something from the past and you give it meaning and you try and slot it into things. But Patrick Geddes does really seem to be a man whose ideas are absolutely those of today. Yes. Now, you talked about regenerative design. Do you want to take, t talk a little bit about how he regenerated some of the proper uh, buildings. Yeah, so um, two of the kind of main things he did were firstly conservative surgery, um, which meant tearing down some of the old buildings in order that the ones that were left, the more historically important ones, provided better and livable in conditions for the people that were there. So actually this space is a really great example of this. When Patrick Geddes bought Riddles Court in 1890, there was a building completely covering this space where I'm standing and also completely covering that wider courtyard. You only had a very narrow passage through the middle. And was that a sort of low rise? They, were, they were probably about half the height right. of the buildings right. around us today. Um, but they were, they were old buildings and some could say they were historically important in their own right. But Patrick Geddes saw that in order to make the rest of the buildings around them more hygienic, in order to let in light and air, um, things like piping, you needed to get rid of the most dilapidated okay. buildings. And so that's what he did, and he created this lovely open space. And I mean, that, that's, that was a major deal, because that the whole of the place was pretty slummy. Yeah. And, you know, the, the argument could have been, let's, let's lose it. And the argument some 50 years later was that. And yeah. a lot of uh, areas in Edinburgh were bulldozed because they were thought um, un unmanageable. Uh, but he had that conservative surgery approach, which is a, a wonderful uh, term to remember as we go forward with Concrete Designs to Thrive. The other thing that uh, we talked about was the greening up of the old town. So this is close to my heart, and you know we, we've found more than ever a walk in nature and contact 
with trees and, and you know, any natural growth. It's good for the soul and well-being. It's now well researched and, and evidenced. Um, something additional happens when new areas are brought in that are green into the city and he, he was responsible for that. Do you want to tell us yeah, a little bit about he, these so he gardens? basically believed exactly what you did. He really believed in the importance of having green space around and what he recognised was that although there were, you know, Edinburgh is surrounded by lovely green countryside and there were some urban parks at the time, um, but what he recognised is that the people living in the centre of the crowded old town couldn't really access those spaces. Um, so what he did was he set up a commission to look at empty spaces available in the old town that could be turned into gardens. And he identified about 75 along the length of the Royal Mile and throughout the old town. Um, and at least 10 of those were converted into gardens and remain so today. Um, so Johnson Terrace Nature Reserve, just along there, and also the Granny's Garden, um, and one down on Westport, close to Edinburgh College of Art, which is now very appropriately named the Geddes Garden. Yes. So wonderful, and they, they still exist, they're still appreciated, and we'll, we'll get a chance to some, uh, have a look at, uh, through some of those on our walk, and also to look at uh, a garden that has been redesigned, much as he might have um, envisaged a new uh, back garden plot. Um, you've been very um, patient um, and helpful w for me in, in sharing your enthusiasm and your knowledge. Um, you're part of a, a bigger organisation organization called the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the work of SHBT? Yeah, so the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust is over 35 years old. We are a buildings preservation trust and our aim is to take historic buildings that are dilapidated, at risk of neglect and demolition and to revive them, bring them back to life and fill them with people. So this doesn't always mean keeping them for the same purpose that they were built for. Um, so we have some of the buildings, we return them. Um, for instance, the cinema we have out in Bowness, the Hippodrome, um, which is the oldest cinema in Scotland. Um, but others we change, so we use them for offices yeah. or events venues. Uh, now I've had a I've had a bit of a relationship with the SHBT. It was a joy to uh, exhibit in the Merchant's House in Laws Close in Kirkcaldy. I've also been down in uh, Custom Lane and Custom House in Leith. So two wonderful properties. I'm going to try one of those. Um, can we get away with this comparison? I think we can. We've got a tower that Patrick Geddes repurposed, and we've got a building here that SHBT have repurposed. Can we talk a little bit first about the tower? Yes, so the Outlook Tower um, you referred to um, that you may have seen um, right at the beginning um, is just up next to the castle. That was purchased by Patrick Geddes in 1892 and he purchased it as a base for his civic and regional surveys. Um, so he was very keen in surveying Edinburgh, um, taking lots of photographs. He was working with the Edinburgh Photographic Society and produced a huge number of photographs of the old town at that time, which is still really, really useful today. Um, and he wanted to display these along with maps and town plans and sketches in order to teach people about Edinburgh and the wider locality. So it was a meeting place. It was a, a meeting real place. A culture hub yes. meeting place. And it became more than a library. It became more than that, very much so. I mean, it really encompasses Geddes' ideas, one of which was to bring people together and to have discuss interdisciplinary discussions. So he brought artists, scientists, philosophers. He would hold regular summer schools at the Outlook Tower and Ramsey Garden behind, which was another building that he um, restored and changed. And so he would bring people together to have discussions in order to further all of the disciplines together. Fantastic. And here we are right up, and I think it was 2017, a repurposing and remodeling of this building by SHBT. Yeah. And I'm going to draw a direct comparison. It's a meet, it's a culture hub and a meeting place. Tell us a little bit about this building. Yeah, so um, Riddles Court was taken on um, by the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust and it went through quite a long restoration process. Yeah. Um, it was a total of six million pounds that we fundraised and put into the building and it was completed in 2017. Um, it's now used as our headquarters, our offices, also as an events venue and as the Patrick Geddes Center for Learning. Um, so we encourage people to come here to learn about the work of Patrick Geddes and his wider circle, those around him, but also putting some of his educational philosophies into practice. So we work with local schools, bringing them into the building and also taking them to some of those garden spaces that we mentioned. Wonderful. So uh, uh, really uh, a meeting place of, of, of true uh, 
Gadesian uh, impact. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for, for chatting, Emma. You're it's wonderful. I know that we'll be back and we hope to, to work with you in, in the future. You mentioned at the Outlook Tower that wonderful archive. So we've, we've talked about Patrick Geddes' design legacy and we've referred to other design legacies for our con con Concrete Designs to Thrive uh, programme. The design archive, I'm pleased to say, a lot of it survives and yep. it's with the Univer University of Edinburgh. And I'm thrilled to say that tomorrow we're going to be uh, chatting with Fran Baysby at the uh, wonderful George Square Basil Spence Design Library about design archives. Wonderful. But thank you again for, for talking. So we've been thinking about meat on our concrete designs to thrive. Thanks so much for um, joining us and I hope you enjoyed this evening. Uh, we don't have a function tonight for sending in questions, but if you'd like to do that through any of our social media channels or via the website, please do and we'll try and tackle the answers. And join us again tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Uh, when we'll be continuing our concrete walk by design. Thank you very much.